And then, yeah, you know, just the weekend there, we had two of our up and coming amateurs, Jordan Fury. Yeah. You know, a big knockout guy, incredible power, so paw, big left hand, big left high kick. And he got his first submission win. Again, it happened within two minutes. And then uh, Young Blessed, um, he won the featherweight belt, I think it was, featherweight or lightweight belt, um, against a very tough guy from Team Rhino, my old Roy of Alandi Ryan that we'll be sharing them out with soon enough. Stop. Stop just like that. Stop. Stop. Sharp, isn't it? Bro, I'm waiting for you here years, bro. Man, one more chapter, one more chapter, man. The fuck are you reading about chapters for, man? What chapter? What's that? Mastery. I am a master. Don't worry, bro. No, I, I know, I know. Yeah, he's, he's got. I think he, he gets it anyway. It's, it's just about me making sure that I fucking. Um... Bro, right, so you're like, don't put pressure yeah, yeah. on yourself. Yeah. Why not? It's not pressure. We're having like <laughs> when we, it's like it's like when we're deflecting off each other there, bro. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, okay, okay. So I've done the intro. Right, so chapter one. By way of the fighter. By way of Nahum Alam. Nahum Blessed Alam, born in Eritrea Asma, fighting on behalf of Ireland and Eritrea. I have a question for you. What's your purpose? What's your why? I wanted to start off with um, like your why. Why why have you like what have you decided to become a fighter? Yeah, that's um, that's the million dollar question that everybody asks me this, and um, and always it's great because it makes me think of why you know what I mean. That's that's a question that everyone wants to know. I think for me it was more of a self defense thing that that got me to to where I am right now. Yeah. As a different guy, a guy from Eritrea, mm -hmm. a guy that just came to Ireland. A guy that doesn't know the culture, a guy that doesn't know what way they talk, what way they speak, um, ha like it was just very new to me. And yes, I got in a lot of conflict, I got in a lot of fights, I got in a lot of arguments. And the only way I wanted to solve it is by fighting. Yeah. And every time I fought, there was this feeling where my body would tell me do it, but my body couldn't do it. So I start asking myself, what, what, what is wrong with this? Why, why am I not performing the way I think? I'd, I'd go home and think about this. Mm. And I'm saying to myself, why can't I not perform? Why could I, why could I not hit him? Why? Why? And the question was never answered. So I wanted to learn a, a self-defense. If there's a, a karate club around my house, if there's, a, if there's boxing, I just wanted to do it as a hobby. I just wanted to do it so I know how to defend myself. Mm. I did not like bullies, and bullies always thrive when someone doesn't know how to, when they know I'm you're weak. Yeah. Yes. So for me, then I was I started discovering new gyms. So I wanted to know how to defend myself, and fast forward about eight to ten years, mm -hmm. here I am. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our producer Darren Keith has called us off the action after 1 minute and 21 seconds of round number one. For your winner, Via Amba, Noam Wilder! Please have your applause for Roland Sana. And after five great rounds, we have a stoppage. In the fifth. At the official time of 1 minute and 31 seconds, referee Lara has found stop to the action. Declaring the winner and the new FCC Super Lightweight K1 champion, fighting out of the blue corner. And it was the Lem's ability to get the position before the submission to force the win.
Ireland winning over Mexico here at Featherweight in the IMF World Championships at Cage 2. And there's the victory dance from Alem, Ahom Alem from Ireland utilizing the Muay Thai techniques and then the back control with the rear naked choke to secure the win. By unanimous decision, 30-27 for your winner, I think we've, we've um, gone forward a bit, but I wanted to talk about visualization and um, how you visualize yourself um, actually getting into into to where you are now. Your family, how has your family impacted you? In, in <clears throat> yeah, so uh, as a young kid, my my family, um, my dad and my mom uh, passed away at a very young age. I was literally two, mm. and my 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 father passed away, and then my mother just literally followed up a year after. Yeah. And it was just such a coincidence, and um, yeah, it was it was such a tragedy. It was so traumatizing yeah. as a as a young kid growing up with no mother or father. You know, it's it's a lot. It's hard and it's traumatizing. But my auntie done such a great job raising me um, alongside my, my two sisters also and my 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 my, uh, my brothers. And yeah, it, it, they got me to where I am like a father figure, like like a mother, and I couldn't be where I am without them. Mm. So as traumatizing as it was, here I am standing next to you or sitting next to you, um, got where I am because of them. So I can't really moan, right? Yeah. But it was a trauma that I had to lose my family at a young age. Um, again, from there on, I was just so protected my auntie and my, my, uh, my uncle, they, they all protected me. They didn't want me to obviously get in any dangerous situation. The reason being is I am the only one for my family and they want me to represent and they want me to, you know, one day get to the stage that I want to get to. They didn't want me to. That's why when I wanted to be a fighter, they didn't want me to take that route. They wanted me to go, go run, do football. Mm. You know what I mean? Go to school, learn, do what everyone else does. Um, education is the main thing, yeah. but the, the reason that they're saying this is there's only one thing, safety. And as you said, you mentioned visualization earlier on. For me, I, I don't visualize myself being an average guy. And that is not arrogance. That is just severe confidence. And not only that, everyone else should be like this. Yeah. If you do not have the confidence, if you don't have the confidence, mm. you wouldn't be here right now yeah. doing a podcast. You would be like, you'd come up with every excuse under the sun to not do this. Yeah. Maybe you're not feeling good. Ah, maybe you're, the situation is like this. Maybe you're too busy. Mm. But no, to make anything happen in life, you have to work. Yeah. You have to work at the right things. So yeah, my family did protect me, got me to where I am. And at the end of the day, I had to go out of their will, although they knew it was dangerous for me, I know better. Yeah, I'm saying we can go this way and the girl is saying, ah, ah, who's talking to you, you know what I mean? I know you like me, so stop fucking making fucking scenarios up in your head. Fuck's sake, too, too good looking for these people. Let's bounce, bro. Does it need a picture of me as well? I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. Listen, I don't know why I have to pay for it. No, people just like have to pay for it. Listen, we could um, hit a letter of complaint there. Please remove bag from belt. Horse, horse. Where do you put your tag? Yeah, bro. Yeah. 
told you, bro. This is crazy, this is, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> There's a bomb or something in there, bro. <laughs> yeah. No way! Left my passport there, bro. Left my passport there, I swear to God. So what do we do now? And that, you know, that life skill where your, your aunt takes over, like, the, the actual... Not only mentorship, but as a, a family member to making sure that you you grow up safely. Like that she's taken on, um, has that um, led to you yourself learning um, and and having that life skill where you're now mentoring other people and you're you're doing what you're doing now at the moment with the yes a hundred hundred percent. I I'm starting um, and uh, yeah, thank you for for letting the public know as well advertising me at the same time. Really appreciate that. So uh, after all that. The only way, when I got in a lot of fights, the only way I could really solve my problem without getting any fights was to go to youth clubs. Every skill I get thrown out to. From, here, from this skill I get moved to this skill, then they throw me out as well. Because I was just that kid that, don't get me wrong, I wasn't a saint. I was always, uh, you know, I always talked, I always talked back. But mainly I stood my ground with anyone that tried to start on me. And uh, don't get me wrong, Ireland is not, uh, I'm not saying it's a racist place or anything like this, but at the end of the day, wherever country you go, there will be people that are bad. Yeah. Not necessarily anything got to do with the country, but there's just bad people. So, yeah, for me, the only way, my only option was to just go to a youth club, which was NYP2 at the time. I really loved going there, spend time playing pills, snooker, exchanging with people, you know, networking, connecting with people. And it was just, it was great. And it got me out of my mind. It got me out of, you know, all the problems that I had at the time. Yeah. And then eventually it was MMA that beca became that for me. Ever since I got into MMA, I can count in one hand how many times I got in trouble. Yeah. Never fought. Yeah, yeah. The reason being is because MMA gives you discipline. So here I am starting a, a youth club. Um, it's called Positive Steps youth center it's uh, in Fibsborough um, the reason I'm doing this is I'm not doing this for money mm. it's free for everyone yeah. I just want people to chase they, their dreams and get them off the streets yeah. that's all so it's just for the greater goods I'm just looking forward to this bro the stop that we're going to is London Show Fighters listen I'm trying to take positive steps using my platform to show my people, the people I grew up with, you know, my ends, my streets, to show them how it feels like to train with one of the best gyms in the whole world, London Shield Fighters. Um, yeah, man, I'm just getting jittery, you know what I mean? But I'm, I'm very humbled to be in the situation that I'm in. Um, exactly like, and I'm not known for being humble, so here I am, taking positive steps. Listen, I don't know where my passport is, and that's that. That's all you need to know, and that's where my mindset is at. But again, we're taking positive steps no matter what, yeah? <laughs> Woo! How are you? Sorry for the hassle. Thank you very much. It's literally right here. Bang, bang. Perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks a million. Sound. Mind Thank you very much. To, I'm gonna have to stay out looking at fucking Tommy boy, that's all right, you know what I mean? Got your passport, that's the main thing. Uh, yeah, that's the main thing. We have the passport now, we're on the plane. Looking forward to making progress now, talking to KSI, talking to MVP, talking to the coaches, you know what I mean? This is the best gym, legitly the best gym. So uh, I'm humbled to be here. London, baby. <laughs> yeah, where's Russ Millions at? Like that. Left, right. Where's he at? 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 Where's he
Boom! London Shoe Fires! It's locked, lad. Where's Sarah when you need her? Shout out to SBG. Nah, that was a bit cringe, wasn't it? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd noticed yesterday, like you put through from a, a problem, find a solution, and then you solved it. And like, with you and your team, it, it was like terrific to see like from the yeah. positive to... Yeah, like, no, to it's all got to do with a mindset. And it comes with, I think, I don't think you can, like, some people are really gifted at that, but I think for me, it was more mixed martial arts, uh, a fire. Everyone is a fire. We're all here fighting life. Life is the biggest fight of all. An opponent, the biggest opponent is yourself. And every day we're fighting. As I told you to start this podcast, for mm. me to start fighting, mm. you have to fight yourself. You have to fight your demons that are telling you no, no, no. So I think doing martial arts yeah. kind of helped me find out about that and master and how to deal with it. So I think all credit to fighting. So um, MMA, martial arts, um, is, it, is it a solution? Is martial arts, for you it's a solution, but how is like training, mental health, how, the bullying, like how does martial arts um, fit into it? In the it gets you out of your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing as meditation movement, yoga, anything got to do with wellness, health, you know, these are the type of things in this society, in this day and age, many people are too stuck in their programming, they're too stuck working, you know, their nine to five job and just getting the money in and not looking after themselves. Yeah. And this is where it's going to pay dividend. One day you will feel bad, you will feel sad and, you know, I always use the example of a heartbreak. Have you ever been heartbroken? All the time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so think about it. The moment you're heartbroken, most people need to go to the gym. Mm. Not, I can't go to the gym because I'm heartbroken. The reason being is you're dealing with yourself. The biggest fight, not just the circumstance then, it's, it's yourself. Mm. So as I said, the biggest fight you can ever have is yourself. And... Mm. It's just learn how to win every single time. That question, when you say, have you ever been heartbroken? Yes. Is that the, is that, was that the, the problem that you need to solve to, in order to become... Yeah, yeah, well, heartbreaks is one of the toughest. I think it's, it, it's up there, one of the toughest. Like, um, either heartbreak or losing someone you love, as in, like, death yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I think... When it comes to all that, that, that is one of the hardest to, thing to deal with when it comes to life. Mm. And that, that's where you either, you, either, you either break or you don't. Mm. There's no in between. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. Oh, my girl left me, now she's with someone else. Or maybe the guy that I love uh, or the, the girl I love is gone. Or maybe my parents in my case, mm. you know. The way to deal with this is by getting into yourself. And the way to get in yourself, what best way can you get into to yourself than going in, training, forcing yourself to push through the dark. When you're going in, you don't want to get up, you don't want to go to, out of that bed to go push, run, all them things. It's going to be hard. Mm. But when you do push, all the other things become easy. Yeah. Gerald, what's that about? Jack Fitzgerald is a, a this is, a, so basically one time he did say to me, um, we were playing football, I used to play football, I wasn't really good at it, I move about for a bit, people just breaking me up and uh, obviously I think the, the, play, the, the way I used to play back home in Eritrea is completely different as well, that's another topic, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, it just wasn't my thing, it was, I could never perform on the pitch, it, it was just different. I play for Navan Road. Um, I play in loads of positions, but uh, mostly in right wing. I was born in Eritrea in Africa. I moved to Dublin in 2009. 
football is important because uh, I enjoy it so much and I love it. And I think I don't get stressed when I when I'm in the pitch, so I just like it. But I got to the point where I said to myself. I need to learn how to fight. I need to learn how to discipline myself. So then this Jack Fitzgerald comes in. Mm. At the time, he lied about about <laughs> this. But then he did say, I do uh, kickboxing for this many years and I have this many belts. I was like, really? Okay, let me try it. So I went in mm. and uh, yeah, after that, I never just looked back. What was the first gym you, you went into? Living I at the time. Yeah, is that, is that still, are you part of that? It's still part of that. That's my home gym. And now you're with SBG. I'm also training SPG. My MMA would be based in SPG. My striking would be with Dublin Combat Academy. Mixed martial arts is a, it's a, it's a lot. It's not just one sport. There's a lot of sports that you have to mix. Yeah. Because it's a fight. Yeah. Some people would be really good at kung fu, boxing, mm. judo. Some be masters at jiu jitsu. So, you have to kind of find a way how to be any style. You have to adapt. Mm. No sport like this. You have to adapt. If you can't adapt you will be found out. Okay. So yeah, I try my best to fix all problems and all ho holes that I have and I cover them as soon as possible. When we talk about your aunt, um, the, the, the different um, um, fighting lifestyles, I guess like the different mi mixed martial arts and we talk about your, your corner now, um, your coaches, how important is that to you? Like, who, who's, who's, who's in your, on your corner? You know, like, that is the thing. Have you ever heard of the saying, you know, when you win, Everybody is gonna be with you. Yeah. And when you lose, maybe your family is gonna text you, okay? <laughs> and your best friends are gonna be like, you're all good. Especially when it comes to fighting, right? Yeah. So as you said, you mentioned corner. It's very it's very important to know who your corner is. Mm. And as much as, you know, everyone wants to celebrate when you win, when you lose, not many people do. Mm. When you're successful and when you're rich. Everyone wants to do interviews with you. Everyone wants to do all this with you. But when you're just like me, trying to make big one day, and the people that, that really want to help you then, these are the real people. Mm. For me, these are your... So that was leading to my next question: winning, losing. Um, how, how do you how like what do you feel like when when you're? It's a stupid question, but how do you feel like when you're winning? It's and first how, and, and foremost, like it's not a stupid question because yeah, yeah. you have me talking my truth and yeah, I'm yeah. real with you. So yeah, there's no such thing as a stupid question. So so how does it feel like when when you're you're winning? What's the attitude um, towards it and after it as well? Likewise with losing. Listen, it's, there's, no, there's nothing like it. You're about to go in to fight a guy that's about to kill you, that has been training f for yeah. that many years, that is doing this professionally. There's nothing more scary. But the highest of the highs, the lowest of the low. You can go in there and win and mm -hmm. feel like you're on cloud nine. When you lose, now you're not talked about. 
Now, nobody cares if you're okay the next day. Yeah. Everyone just remembers, oh, you took an L. Yeah. You know? Um, you can look at every go, every superstar that we, we had. They were a champion at one time. Mm. When they lost, they're no more. The yeah. new guy is the champion. He's the one that has the limelight. So it, it is a really heartbreaking sport. It's not for the faint-hearted. So how do you prepare for that? Like how do you, when you know it's time or when you know if, if it is a, a loss or if you know it's time to, to, to stop, you have this attitude where it's, um, you can actually, you're, you're so confident, you have this ability that, you know, I, you I, can't I, stop. I, Like when you're training every day, as I said, when you're pushing yourself every day, I can't break. No matter what life brings to the table, I cannot break. I'm just thinking, what's next? What do I do next? Mm. Where do I go next? If I can't find that out, I don't know what I have to do, but I'll have to try to find it out. Mm. So there's not one st- at one stage, there, there's, not, uh, there's no point where I'm going to stagnate. That's not in my mind. I think that is vital for everyone. Yeah. You can't break yourself. Life will bring you, will throw you stones, will throw you a lot of hard things. Mm. And sometimes you'll feel weak and that's okay. You'll feel you, you want to cry and you want to crumble. You just want to go to bed and not talk to anyone for days and days and that's okay. Mm. But you're going to have to face it. Yeah. And that's what real people do. And how is it like with your coaches? Obviously, when we spoke about your, your family, your auntie, and now your coaches, SPG, um, John Kavanagh, and also um, Dave. Dave, yeah. and Collie and Craig, yeah. Yeah, Craig, uh, Dave, um, how is that? When you're, when, you're not, when you're down and you're low and you're not, you're, you're not feeling today to train, how do you, how do you come out of it? How do, you, how do they help you as coaches? As, 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 coaches, okay. as coaches, you kind of you kinda have this connection, so they will know. So there was... If it's, a, if it's time where I'm so tired and I don't want to keep going, they'll push me. You best believe they'll push me. Mm. Come on, what are you doing? Keep going, keep going or else you're going to get 50 burpees. Mm. You're going to keep going. Mm. But there will be time where, let's say, my auntie's sick. Then family comes first. They will, they will understand. Yeah. So th- there's, a, there's a special connection right there between coaches. Yeah. Like when I'm fighting and I get hurt, they will say, keep going, push, push, push. But if I do get really bad hurt where I can't even move, they'll throw the towel. So they will know. Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying this to scare the people away. Yeah. And what we do is a uh, methodical sport. It's not such a vicious sport. But at the end of the day, it comes with risks. So coaches do a great job of knowing that, calculating that straight away. Do I need to push? Or no, it's a little bit too much. So the, it's, that's why it's great to have a great coach. Anybody mm. that wants to have a great coach, come to Dublin. Yeah. Dublin Combat Academy or SPG Ireland. So that, that's actually my next, um, my next question. Like how that, that, that transition, you're, you're fine under the Irish banner. How Irish, is, Irish and Irish? Eritrean. Yeah. Irish and Eritrean. Yeah, yeah. I have the Irish spirit yeah. and the Eritrean soul. Yeah. Make no mistake about that. So the Irish have uh, a love for mixed martial arts. Yes. You know, and Eric trains so we're, we're born fighters. Yes. So how, how, how has that impacted you? And actually, like, being in Ireland, how Well, look at my record, bro. Flawless. Number one mixed martial artist in, in the UK. Um, I'm probably moved now a little bit from inactivity, but, like, I've, I've uh, you know, became this silver medalist in, in, the, in, in Europe. I have the... Not being arrogant. It's just mm. stating facts. I am the double time champ Clown Wars. I am the FFC champion. So how has it affected me? I'm not so sure, but I'm doing good so far. Yeah. Um what so there's a there's a fine line between there's a fine line between um being confident and arrogant. Yes. Um how has the people like how has have they received you through through that? How do you you know, I don't. I don't really take too much. <clears throat> I don't get too much attention on, on on people because, as I said, I'm I'm so focused on my team, mm-hmm. on the corner, because mm-hmm. outside noise will always be outside noise. They will say I'm shit one day, the next day I'll be good, the next day I'll be nice, the next day I'll be mean. Mm. So nobody comes out safe. Yeah. You'll always be a meme. So yeah. I I don't. I really take myself outside that box, but um. 
the difference between humble and cocky is I am not I know I am humble the reason being is you've seen me training yeah. yesterday yeah, yeah. I got worked yeah well, I got okay. worked <laughs> yeah so I know I'm not cocky I know I can't fight anybody on the street I understand it's not fighting anybody can use weapons yeah I can't bully people I'm definitely humble yeah. for sure I don't think it's cockiness but people mistake that for cockiness because they don't have that belief that I have in myself on themselves yeah and we're all mirrors of each other right so I think jealousy uh, I'm pretty sure Mick Mill said this jealousy is um, the strongest enemy of all something like that I'm not so sure yeah. but the people that are like that are just jealous yeah you know, someone that's high, that's up there, he will bring me up. He will never, he'll not knock me down. Yeah. But someone that's below you will try drag you down. Yeah. So, I don't pay no attention to that. So when you say you pay no attention, but when when people say um, uh, he's not Irish, he's he's uh, he's black or he's uh, how do you like the noise? <coughs> and I get that a lot. I yeah. get that a lot. Um, like I get hundreds of messages like that. Yeah. Hundreds of comments like that. Yeah. But again, it's a mental fortitude thing. If I can let a comment destroy my mindset like that, well, I have to work on my mindset. Yeah. So it's all just working in. I'm not trying to think outside. Mm. It's in here. When I work here, all is good. You can throw this at me. You can, I'm going the right direction. Mm. You're watching me. I don't know who you are. So how do you? Uh, so when you do that, how do you? How do you do it? Like when you're when you're when your mindset when people are giving you so much noise, so much problems, you're getting messages. You, you if you have a loss in a fight or you something happens yes. negatively. Yes. Pressure, you, pressure, you... pressure creates diamonds, right? Mm. So I can use it for two ways. It can either dishearten me, or I can get angry that that happened, mm. and I'm gonna go. And I'm gonna chase whatever that I need to chase. So it's a it's a matter of sitting down, telling yourself, okay, this went wrong. Mm. Talking to yourself, being honest with yourself, not just with yourself, with everyone else. If you have a girlfriend, a wife, mm -hmm. uh, children, friends, being honest kills all ego. Yeah. So then you're going to come to terms of reality. Okay, I'm doing this, so I need to stop. I'm going out a lot. I'm not training enough. So what do I do? Coach is going to say, okay, I'm not going to tell you to do this mm. because you're not a baby. Yeah. But you need to brush up and at least try make it five times a week. Okay, coach. Now let's push the one day twice a week and then the, the rest once. Okay. And then slowly you work on it. But it starts off with being honest with yourself. These people that are on comments chatting shit to make people, to get people down. I know they're already low in their lives. Yeah, yeah. And I feel sorry for them. I hope they can find the strength to work on themselves and become a mirror, a, a positive mirror. And that's why we're here to help yeah. Positive Steps yeah, yeah. Community Centre. Yeah. How do you stay grounded? Many people won't actually believe this, but um, I'm a big believer of God. And yeah, I'm a sinner. Yeah, I make mistakes. Yeah, I, I don't do things right sometimes. Mm -hmm. But you will know when you're doing something that's really wrong. Mm. You, you know, that kind of way. Yeah. So that, that grounds me from doing anything bad. Now, how do I stay grounded to stay disciplined? I pray to God. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I'm not preaching that I pray, but what I'm saying is I find it easier that if I have problems and I, I pray to God and God help me, somehow God, God just helped me. Yeah. So as much as it sounds as blank as that, it's the truth. And yeah, I'm a big believer in God and God just made everything happen for me so far. So I'm not looking to doubt it. Okay. You've got a good team behind you. You've got, um, like we said, the, the family, the, the team. You know, how do you how do you do that? Like in social media, how do you how do you choose the right people? And also, like with your social media presence, your 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 yeah, yeah you know what I'm, what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So <laughs> that's a great question, bro. Mm. 
my social media presence will always bring me fake people, mm. right? But I have senses that of like, I have this this sense of like, I can tell if someone is trying to, if someone is trying to, you know, what do you want from me? You know, that kind of way. And someone will, will, will like, people that really like you, they're not going to want anything back from you. They're not going to expect anything from you. So if someone expects something from me, then I'll just know straight away that's a big, a big error. Mm. Um, social media presence, there's a lot of haters. There's a lot of people that are, that don't even, that even like the comments I was reading one of the times, um, are you still breathing oxygen or something like that? Like, that's how, rid yeah. <laughs> that's how ridiculous things are. Are you still breathing oxygen? So these type of people, what I've realized is every time I meet them in real life, I never see one. Mm. They either want to take pictures with me. <laughs> They either want to say hello to me, they either just look at me and just walk off. Yeah. The, the, the energy is never the same. All the hate I get on social media yeah. for being myself, for speaking my truth, it's never, ever, ever one day in my life. Some guy told me, are you that at home guy? <laughs> yeah, I want to do something about it. <laughs> or you're this. Never have I seen it. So it shows the weakness, right? Yeah. It shows that they're not, working on themselves to stand ground to what they're saying. Because mm. if I hate someone, I'm going to not want to talk to you. If you talk to me, I'll tell you no. But these people, they slag you one minute, next minute they're asking for pictures. Yeah. So anybody that's watching this, if you're trying to get pictures with me, tell me you love me before you do it, yeah? <laughs> What's happening? Oh, What's your name, bro? Evan Lewis, bro. Yeah. Yes. Uh, What's your name? Eddie Roycroft. <laughs> All good. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, he's all good, the boys. Oh, you don't want me on TikTok? No, you won't be. You're not allowed on TikTok, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all good, all good, yeah, bro. What's good? Why are you up to, bro? Where you just, going? just flying over to England now, boys. Yeah. yeah. What's up with you? Do you do MMA, boxing? Boxing, uh, yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah. Man, you yeah. Man, you have some accent on your voice, bro. Yeah. <laughs> 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 do you watch it on your on the TikTok, do you? Yeah, yeah. I've seen you a few times. You look familiar, man. Legend, legend, boy. Yeah, no, but bro. Where are you heading to? Amsterdam, bro. Amsterdam. Different boys, like. Come to you, isn't it? Yes, boys. Let's go. Let's flex now a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None, none of that peace here, here bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Yeah, bro, where are you from, man? You look from Skilling. Definitely. Don't, definitely don't know him, man. <laughs> Rui. Right. We're flexing here, boys, yeah? Yeah, yes, bro. Legend of boys, yeah. Appreciate yes, it. Yes, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yeah. When we talk about, so we talk about grounded, um, God, that like you're a big believer in God, yes. um, <clears throat> social media, like as an incubator, as everything um, puts together, how do you, like, how do you control your demons? How do you control your, your, your <sighs> I'm not perfect, bro. And that, that's yeah. a, that you're asking great questions, great deep questions. And it's making me think about myself, which is really good. Mm. Um, brother, I can't even lie to you. Like, nobody is perfect. Yeah. I don't care who, anybody that's watching this, please let us know if you think you are perfect. I don't think anyone is perfect. Nobody is perfect. If you're a superstar, I don't care if you're a doctor, if you, I don't care if you're an engineer, nobody is perfect, especially in God's eyes. But how do you control yourself? Like your, your, your fights are the, um, what you eat, what you, what you drink, and just um, even your, your, your family life, like how do you make sure that you're straight, straight now, like without the, the coaches and stuff? How do you personally, how do you pers like, persevere from it? Just coming back to that, to that inner discipline why I wanted it, why I started this. Mm. I'll have the urge to go out and drink. I'll have the urge to do what my, what my, 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 for my friends are doing, people the same age as me, what they're doing. I can't do what they're doing just because I always go back to thinking, why did I start this? Yeah. And that'll give me a fire. 
That's why you always need to have a goal. I always say this, at least even have 24-hour goals. Mm. I know some people will sit there and say, I don't have a goal, I don't know what to do. Okay, let's just have 24-hour goals. You wake up today, thank God for waking up. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Be grateful for all you have and what you're doing for that day. Mm. And then after that, you can go progress to six months. What you want to be like in six months? In a year time, what you want to be like? And for me, that kept me sane, that kept me disciplined of like every time I'm not reaching my goal, I find it hard to even sleep. Yeah. I can't sleep. There's something touching me, there's something waking me up and it's the dream that I had. So it's always great to have a dream. What's the fire spirit? What would you call a fire spirit? What, what, what's, what, what, how could you define that? Fighting spirit. Someone that's ready to go at any moment. Mm. Someone that is okay with difficulties and he can try. I'm not saying he can solve them. No, we're not, not, not everything you can solve, but try to solve for sure. And um, yeah, after doing this, God will just meet you halfway. That's my belief. Um, do you feel like the odds are against you at times? For sure. Yeah. Most of the time. And um... being, being in, a, you know, in Ireland, you will meet racist judges at times. Mm. And it ha has happened to me once. I was beating the guy for three rounds. Not even one scratch on me. Not even has he landed one punch. They called it a draw. They said it was a draw. When you watch that fight, mm. the guy does not land one punch. I have him backed up. I'm the aggressor. I'm landing all the shots. I'm the flashy. But no, I was right on his hometown, in his hometown, and boom, he won it. So the odds are for sure not a doubt against me at times. Not all the time, but at times. But God is with me. You moved uh, at a period of time, I think you moved for a year to Dubai. What was that about and, and how did that come? Oh, that was, that was, that, that was crazy. That was, that, that's when I met the best people mm. I've, when it comes to, to combat. You know, that's where I met Dan Hooker, one of, one of uh, uh, friends of mine. He's really good at what he does. Mm. He's a UFC fighter. And it's really good to see do, him do what he does. Um, he showed me levels that I need to be on. Yeah. Some days you'll feel yourself. You feel like you're really good when you meet people that caliber. How, then, did, how did you meet Dan Hooker? How did that happen? I remember one time uh, I seen him and he, like, I kind of seen him in the gym. And I wanted to talk to him. He's like, oh, Dan Hooker, how are you? All good? He says, yeah, great. And obviously I asked him a few questions. And next minute, here he is doing a personal training with me for free. Mm. For free. And a UFC guy is now doing personal training with me for free. It was very hard to believe how nice he was. Mm. And to me, that just motivated me. I'm like, I want to do these things. Here I am with the youth center. I just want to help people. I don't gain any benefits from this. I don't care about any benefits. The community I'm just serving because the community got me to where I was. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. I can't. I have to say, I got worked. <laughs> no, you did a great job, man. You did but, a great uh, job. That was brilliant coaching uh, out with you and great assistance out with the whole team as well. So, basically, what I want to ask you is how did you get to MMA? How did I get to MMA? Oh, shit. <laughs> we're going back nearly half a century. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as kids, we're, we're from a war torn country. So, we, we came to London uh, from a war and we were put in a very poor area. As, 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 as very, very young kids, and if you didn't learn how to fight, you were getting beaten up. Yes. Again, that's life, you were getting beaten up and robbed, so we learned how to fight. So we, boxing, we were in boxing gyms since we were three, four years old. Yes. Um, Jiu-Jitsu gyms, um, traditional Jiu-Jitsu gyms, traditional Judo gyms, traditional Muay Thai, and then switching over um, at the very beginning of, 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 the, uh, of the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu phase. So yes. my coach was Helio Gracie. It wasn't 
somebody who was coached by a Brazilian, who was coached by, by, by. Yeah. I learned from Helio Gracie, from Hickson Gracie, from Hoist Gracie. They were my coaches. I lived in that academy. Brilliant. So we're, 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 that was pre, you know, that was 90s. Great, great. So and how, how did it impact your life? I think, um, for me personally, um, you know, you get infatuated with materialistic things a lot of the time when you're young and you want things. And unfortunately, like, you know, we would work, we would uh, have security companies or run nightclubs and uh, we would train in the daytimes and, you yes. know, fight in the night times and that yeah. sort of stuff. And <laughs> unfortunately, that, that environment doesn't breed champions. And the guys yeah. that we box with as kids end up having WBC world titles, yes. end up going to Olympics and getting gold medals and they're going, yes. you know, and it's, you know, it's seeing those guys that you're their sparring partners for yes. getting paid a little bit of money, yes. make it to the top. Yes. So for me, you know, unfortunately, I took the path that I don't want fighters to take. Yes. In. You know, you, you get not just greedy, but like I was good. At, uh, you know, I can box and I can do jiu-jitsu. So, you know, and then I finally got to get my hands on a wrestler. And yes. I was like, shit, this guy's great. Yes. I got to learn how to wrestle. Yes. So then I end up getting good enough to go to the Olympics to learn how to wrestle. Yes. So all, every time you get, you, as, a, as a combative athlete, every time you get your hands on someone that's yes. better than you, oh, no. from somebody is like, from a, 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 a man's point of view, I feel like shit. I've got to figure <laughs> out what to do about that because that can beat me up. So it got, I, I got into it by almost being around really special fighters and athletes yes. and yes. coaches yes. that put me out of my depth. And it made me want to swim. It, they drown me, and it made yeah. me want to learn. Well, maybe even sometimes not swim. Made me want to yeah. learn how to drown better. <laughs> like it, it made me not want to fucking die. Yes. So it, it, I was kind of forged in fire because if I think that it, you know, like we said, if you're a race car driver, you're going to race the car right yes. like a motherfucker. So you're yes. a fighter. Yes. You came to this gym. Yes. And today I made you fight. Yes. I, you'll get better at your job from that. Yes. You didn't get hurt. You worked your ass off. You yes. learned some stuff, but yes. you fought. Yes. So we could come in and do pads all day long. Yes. What the fuck does that mean? 100%. But from a coaching point of view, any coach in the, in the world that says to you, I'm going to get you better by pads, yeah? Yes. I think it's arrogant and disrespectful because I can make anybody look good on pads and so yes. can you. The key really is what, have we, what are we dealing with? What have we got? Yes. And then how can we instantly make that better? And the good thing about coaching is... Exactly, that's what you do. Yeah, and the big yes. thing about coaching is I made what you were good at better yes. and could tell you some of your mistakes, but I would never have ever been able to have seen that yes. unless I saw you scrap. For sure. Yeah. In a safe manner. Um. <coughs> You, you make opportunities yourself. You make, like, I've been the whole day with you yesterday. You make opportunities <laughs> yourself. So, how, how do you... I'm a chancer, bro, yeah? I'm a chancer. But, um, Before I like, start annoying... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's... Uh, I, we keep that off camera, yeah? We keep that off camera. How do you... Um, not why, but... How has it been... How has it been um, <clears throat> That creating opportunity. How do I create opportunities, bro? So what I do is, I think a man behind the camera there, Tommy Boy, would do it better than me. I think we can we can agree on that. It's just that I'm surrounded by a smart team, right? Yeah. And these team around me, I don't waste time talking about. I don't talk about bollocks. Yeah. All I talk about is something that makes sense. Yeah. If it's got to do with fighting, I'll talk to you. If it's got to do with let's work on this, I will listen and I will talk to you. If you're coming up to me saying Manchester United bet Liverpool yesterday, yeah. I don't really care about that, bro, because it's a waste of time. If you're telling me about this guy doing this to this guy, I'm not, I am not arsed. Mm -hmm. Even my own girlfriend, I can't, I can't watch a season. Top Boy came out. I can't watch it. Mm -hmm. So always thinking what you have. You look at the chain. What, what, what people do I have in my circle that can help me to get there? Okay. Uh, Tommy Boy, he's connected with this guy. So, Tommy Boy, can you connect me with that guy? So, it's always working in chains. I'm not a smart guy or a different guy. That's not what I'm saying. But my connection always comes from the people that are around me. Mm. I have a good team. I have a smart people around yeah. me. So, the key is, if there's five millionaires mm. that are your friend, you are next. Mm. If five of them are alcoholics and they waste time, you're next. Yeah, yeah. You're next. That's like the art of the sale, basically. How do you, like, selling yourself. It's not really the, the, the easiest. Selling yourself. Yeah. Life is about selling yourself, bro. Mm. If you can't sell yourself in life, you're wasting time. And I'm not looking to try and waste time. I'm here selling myself, selling my team, selling the people that, that help me. If it's not got to do with that, I don't care. Yeah. Time, time is too short. So time is still valuable. What's what's the the end? What's your dream? What's your whole? What's the what's the, the plan? My Where dream. Are you trying to reach to? My dream. Right? My dream is a UFC champion, just for the glory. Mm -hmm. 
But more than anything, I give back to my family that raised me. I give back to my community. I give back to the whole world by someone rescued me, let's say. Someone adopted me. So I want to help people because that's what got me to where I want to be. Yeah, yeah, that's a that. Yeah. You're getting emotional right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that dream. Um, how do you like? How do you make it happen? How do you like? It's um, the UFC. Like, how are you gonna, great question? How are you gonna do it? <clears throat> it's a that's a million dollar question, bro. And I wish I can tell you, but I know I'm close. Yeah. I know I'm close. Everything you've been doing, like the team that you have, the, the coach. They're, the they're all you're with in, me. They're you're, all. In, you're in the right places. So you've put your, already your, your in position. I'm in position. It's just a matter of time. Mm. It's um, the people that I have with me, they've been supportive since day one. They've been supportive since I was a nobody. I still am a nobody. But I am now in a better position than I was yesterday. That's all that matters. If it's going to take me another 10 years, which I highly doubt, it, mm. I'm too good looking, I'm too sharp, I'm too, I'm too all that. But if it's going to take me another 10 years, probably I'll get this hand, but I'll get over it. But I'm not going to stop. Mm. That's one thing I don't do. I do not stop. So it's very hard to stop a mindset that doesn't want to stop. Yeah. I could have stopped because my family said, you're not, you, you be safe. You're not allowed to do this. I told them I'm going running. I was telling them I'm going to go running, but I'm not going running. I was going to train, fighting. Um, if a mind doesn't want to stop, what's the other thing? What's the other end of it? Mm. When you look at the spectrum, there's stop. What's there? Reaching what you want. Yeah. And until that happens, you can kill me before that. That's cool. I'm dead. But if not, there's no way I'm stopping. We've talked about the position that you're in now. Um, you want to go, you, the, the pinnacle is the, the UFC. I mean, making as much money so you can support everyone around you, your team, your family, the people that yes. uh, brought you up. Um, that, that transition um, to the UFC, at the moment, I think, um, well, you're, you're also like in the limelight with... Um, What's going on? Um, KSI, yeah. Yeah. So, um, how, how do you how, um, when <clears> I go through that um, avenue where you know when I mean the art of the sell, like you're actually selling yourself, like on social media, pushing yourself on yes. social media, yes. you know, calling out um, people, yes, you know, um, like why why do it that way? Why not um, what, the what conventional you, way? Yes. Yeah. So the reason being is the way I I see it is I've realised I came to terms of what do I want out of this. The, the one thing I want to do is I want to be financially free. Mm. After that, what do I want to do? I want to build centers. I'm already starting with, with the, the, yes, yeah. with positive steps. So eventually I want to build centers around the world. Anyway, I want to help people. Anyway, mm. so I came to realization to do all this, you need money. Mm. Yes, I want glory. I want to be number one. I believe I'm number one. It all starts in your head. I believe I'm number one now. Mm. How do I make it happen? No matter what. So I have to build avenues, mm. different types of avenues. I'm afraid of failing. Failure doesn't come to my head, but at the end of the day, I make sure mm. I'm going to succeed. So I'm building avenues of going the YouTube boxing way. You've seen, you were there with us yeah, there in yeah, KSI's yeah, gym. Yeah. Um, great training over there. And I will be on the next Misfits card. Mm. So that is a way to go to get me all the, all the noise, all the, uh, everything Action, else, yeah, yeah. all yeah. the attraction. And then I can call the shots. Mm. The other way is I can go like everyone else. I want to be the best. I want to do this for glory. Uh, 
I, do, I just want to fight and fight people. Bro, if you want to fight people, you don't want money, yeah? Mm. Go outside and fight everyone. <laughs> No, you don't want money, right? Yeah. You just want to fight people, prove something. Okay, have a few drinks, go fight there. So everyone is a liar. Yeah. Financial freedom comes first because you can't put food on your family's plate. What can you do? Mm. If you have a daughter and a son, you can't feed them. What can you do? Mm. So it's a lie to me. No, I only go for glory. That's a lie. That's, mm. that's people are trying to hide their weakness. Mm. And it's not a weakness, but they think it's a weakness. So it's ego more than anything. No, I do this for glory. Yeah. No, everyone wants money. Mm. Yeah. Money is alongside oxygen. So without money, you can't live. So what are you lying about? Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, I came to terms that I want money. I want, and the game is changing. It's not who is the best. Mm. It's, not, it's not what you know anymore. Mm. It's who you know. Yeah. And it's sad. It's sad to see that the, the sport has changed. It's politics now. It's who knows who mm. or who's more marketable. I understand I am really marketable. I'm really handsome. I can fight. Apart from all that, I have a serious team to yeah. make me think, look, this is the way we're going to go. This is the faster way. This is the easier route. I'm always going to take the easier route. They're not doing that. 99% of the people are not even awake yet. Yeah. So I'm blessed. Like my nickname, blessed to have the people around me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to being the first air train champion to ever do this. Me and him were waiting for you. No, no, no. I don't know. Get down to the job, bro. Get down to the job, bro. Yeah, you need one for yourself. Thanks for that. An MVP. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to ask you a question, bro. I've seen you move around. You're like a lightning, bro. Yeah. Um, anybody that's starting, what's your message? What would you say? How can they get to where you are right now? Well, the thing is, that people need to understand that patience for things like this to get to a goal. It's a tough road, and if you don't have the patience to persist and go through these tough training sessions because this is just you've been here one day we're, we're doing this every day for all week all year round when we're when we've got a fight it intensifies and we don't have a fight it's the same as this yes and it hurts there's days that i don't want to come in there's days that i'm just like oh man i'm just gonna rest the day and you have to be like ah oh, but i know the goal that i want to get to i want you know i want to achieve some big things ah let me get up let me you know push myself and go in and just have the patience that it will come you know you're gonna get a few knockbacks i've lost myself a few times and i go get it back and I'm, I'm okay with losing, be okay with knockbacks and just have that patience and understanding and that persistence that you are going to get there if you keep working and, and pushing yourself yes, hard. Yes bro, it's all about dedication and hard work. Mm -hmm. So tell me this, how has MMA impacted your life? I think for me it was combat's just been in my life since I was young. I was fortunate to have mum and dad both be in martial arts and then both sides of my family in martial arts. So my family is just all kicking, punching, so action. Part of yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, they love it. And they understand it. <laughs> I had to tell them I was going running for a while, bro. <laughs> but that's the thing. Obviously, having that support at home definitely helps. But if you know what you want, you're passionate. There's a couple of guys that their families are not okay with this because they don't understand it. Yes. But they're passionate about family. it. They're here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, just, yeah, it's impacted me in the sense that I wasn't born in the best of areas. I don't like to, to, to glamorise it, I think it's, a, it's an old story, everyone's yeah. born in this bad ends and this and that and that, blah, blah, blah. but it is what it is, I was born around yeah. there, the one thing that it gave me is I had the ability to say no to all of my friends, yes. and that's difficult to do, like these are my boys, like, yo we're going to go do this, and I'm like, yeah I can't do it, I'm going like, <laughs> to chill, I'm going to wait here, yes. it's difficult to do, yes. when you've got that kind of peer pressure, that pressure, yes. you know, the people that you like and idolise and look and, you know, look to for all the fun times. Yes. And then in that moment where they're gonna try and do something, you're like, nah. But I had the discipline from the kickboxing. I had a, another peer group from the kickboxing and the martial arts to say, nah, 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 nah. I wanna, I wanna focus on these guys and support, let these guys support me. Phenomenal. Out of all your success that you have, which one is your best accomplishment? Um, best, it's difficult, man, because everything, they're markers. They're just different markers to me being who I am now. So I don't like to, have one above the other, but you know, I think my most memorable uh, for a lot of people is the Pokemon 
you know, knee and cyborg Pokemon celebration. That kind of put put me on the map Fun a bit more. Here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of put me on the map a bit more. And it was it was an amazing evening, an amazing night. Great with the family afterwards. So, I and that it. was great. From seeing me, this is the last question. Am I the next MVP? Um, <laughs> there's only one MVP. <laughs> Pleasure, bro. Nice really one, bro. appreciate nice that. Thank you for giving me time. Nice I'll, I'll keep, keep coming doing here. Yeah, no, nah, seriously, you're always welcome, bro. That, that, you know what, what, yesterday what I noticed, what, um, what made you special was that, you know when you said, oh yeah, um, you know, um, when you was training, when you was training yesterday, you're going into, a, not a new gym, but uh, <sighs> a gym that you haven't been into before and, and basically training and sparring and you, you, you was on the back foot basically. You're, you're smart in the sense that you don't want to, you don't want to hurt yourself. You're, you're in an environment that's not. Exactly. Many people, as I said, they like they're either too smart they can't fight mm. they'd be like oh I, I, I'm too smart so I don't do the sport yeah. or if they do the sport they're too stupid yeah. this is 99% <laughs> of the game yeah, yeah. nobody can do anything simultaneously anymore mm. it's a weakness you can't it's like fighting yeah mm. obviously I don't know if you'd understand but I'm gonna explain to you about striking right mm -hmm. If you do one thing twice, I have read it. Yeah. So now, if you keep, and if you're strong on one side, you have a weakness to the other. Yeah. That's just how life works. Yeah, yeah. Someone that's training four times a day, doing all this, not looking after themselves, just grinding and grinding and grinding, eventually, you lose brain cells, mm -hmm. number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you're not working on other areas, marketing. Can you speak? Can you communicate properly? Can you network good? All this matter. The game is moving. Yeah. It's changing. Yeah. So I've realized if I go to, the, to, to, a, to a gym, I, my fighting style is similar mm. to the way I go on about life. Yeah. First is defense. Yeah. First, don't get hit. Second, win. Yeah. It's not about who scores the most takedowns. It's not about... Who shoots for a takedown? Yeah. It's who solidifies a takedown? Nobody. Okay, who's outpointed more? Who's touching more? It's not about blitzing coming forward all the time. Yeah. It's about who's touching more and not getting hit. When people come out to see you, what's your fighting style? What, how would you explain to them your, 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 your style? My style is mainly it's going to be a stand up battle mm. until they shoot. If they do shoot, I'll finish them. And not even just that. If they beat me standing up, I'll take them down. Yeah. Take them where they can't do it. I beat them. So my fighting style is just win. Yeah. That's what I tell people. What do you do? Are you a boxer? What do you do? It doesn't matter. I do MMA mm. and I'll win. What am I good yeah, at? There, Winning. I have to do what I'm really good at. And it seems to be fighting. Um, I'm looking at all these YouTubers, they're all fucking handbags. And I'm not just saying this, I keep saying this. I know a guy called Wahabi Wahami, Ham Wahabi, whatever his name is. I don't even know. I think that guy genuinely feels like he's a boxer. He talks like he's a boxer. He acts like he's a boxer. Listen, I am not a boxer. I'm a real fighter. I am here letting everyone know I'm a real fighter. You know? Forget all the rule sets. Forget everything else. I am not your normal content creator. I am not your normal uh, fighter. I am a guru in the circle of civilians. Right, so we jump straight in. No pissing about. I know that's what you're about, of course. Um, we'll come back to kind of throwing names out for who you want to fight because I know your statement of intent is you want to get big names and you want to get in the ring and you want to show people what, what you're about. Um, was it always fighting for you then? Was it kind of the only option is fighting and there was kind of nothing else on the table well I tried to play football I was I wasn't really the best at that but what I was really good at was finding out who the bullies are who the fake people are and fighting them and fighting them to death and don't get me wrong I didn't always win but now I'm capable of killing any man and for a youtuber to tell me that he can beat me it's nearly funny it's it's a comedy so I'm looking at these people getting a lot of money it hurts me I put blood, sweat, tears into this. I put every inch of me into this. And you're telling me Halal Wahabi Wahami, whatever the fuck his name is, is going to be 
the one that's going to have the followers. He's going to be the one that's going to put money on his, on his family's table when the fella never worked hard in his fucking life. Your man swarms. What the fuck does he do? Rap? Mate, I'll make him look like a fucking rap, yeah? So would you say there's kind of a, and I don't know if this is the right word, maybe not a, a jealousy aspect, but I'm perhaps run up on, on one of these guys or... Listen, bro, I am sorted. I just need a name. All the promotions like me, they want me to fight. They're all ducking me. Nobody wants to fight me in that promotion. Nobody. Everyone else is way too big. KSI, blah, blah. They're all too big. But all these were hams, hams, porks. They don't want to fucking fight me. That's a fucking problem. So here I am now in London. I floated in Vum, flew to London. Here I am causing murder. Let's fucking do it. Simple. And where does this end for you? Because I know obviously as a fighter and as someone who's as well respected as you are in the mixed martial arts scene. Yes. There's more Number one mixed martial artist in UK. Search that on topology now. So I know what I'm talking about. So you got to believe when I tell you Wahab hasn't got a chance. He doesn't even stand a minute. Not even Swarms. Swarms is a fucking rapper. Call me K-Trap, yeah? You Egypt. <laughs> is it only the influencer side you're focused well, on now? Because I, I, know, I, know, I know you'll want to be world champion in, in, in the mixed martial arts discipline as well, but you kind of got two focuses to balance there. Yes, so. mate. I'll do it simultaneously. Nobody do it better than me. I'll do it simultaneously. I'll be in the UFC. I'll be the world champion. Forget all that. I want to fight these YouTubers and be the world champion. Atta. The only one I like is KSI. Fuck everyone else. I know people have called you the Black McGregor before, yes. and I'm kind of sensing a little bit of that. Well, I can't lie. Everyone calls me the Black McGregor, but listen, I come from the same, the same ends as him. I come from, you know, he's the same club as me. Like, we, we grew up, like, kind of the same kind of community. So, yeah, I, I understand why people say that, but I am my own me. I am not McGregor. I am not home ready. The number one mixed martial artist in Ireland. Check my TikTok, mate. Life is like fighting. Exactly, bro. Um, what, like, what, is that, what is that to you? What, what is that? Uh, life is about winning. Mm. But make no mistake. Remember I said, you can't be strong on one side and not the other. Just because you're winning, you have to be able to lose also. Yeah. I know how to lose. I lost my family. Yeah, yeah. I've lost loved ones. You know, I've lost fights. My record is 11 and 3. Mm. I've lost three fights. Early, early on. Yeah. And even now, from now on, I might lose. Who knows? The game is mad. Anyone can lose at any moment. But either way, I'll have what I need to be to be a winner eventually. Yeah. So I've already asked you this question, like, potentially there are like thousands and millions of fighters out there, yeah? Yeah. Um, what, what makes you stand out? How do you stand like, above everyone else? What makes me stand out? Because, you know, like, there, there is a resemblance um, with, with the SB, SBG gym, um, the whole, um, you know, the, the marketing, the whole, like, um, Conor McGregor style, the Muhammad Ali kind of style. Um, obviously, you're coming from, from Eritrea. So, you have this, um, the Irish um, spirit. You've How answered it yourself, bro. Yeah, yeah. You've answered it yourself. What makes me special is being me. Mm. I get compared to Conor McGregor. You get compared to Muhammad Ali, you get compared to uh, Israel Adesanya, mm -hmm. I get compared to, I don't know, they compare me to everyone, Andrew Tate, mm. on the internet, so, oh, this fella thinks he's Andrew Tate, yeah. because I'm speaking my mind. Yeah. No matter what you can say, I'm not home, Alem. Mm. Not home, Alem, that's me. So, the first Eritrean, to ever do this, mm. to ever win the European title, to ever win a championship belt, to ever do this game and have success abroad. Yeah. That's me. I'm not Conor McGregor. Do, do you hate that? Do you not? Do you dislike that? Or is there... Do you... It's annoying. It's yeah. annoying. Like, yeah. um, oh, this guy, and my accent is obviously... I, yeah. I grew up... I grew up... How can I say to you you have a London accent? Yeah. How, it, it's, I, I grew up in Dublin. That's all, all my friends, all my, like everyone spoke like this. Yeah. I didn't know nothing better. Yeah, yeah. But, and me and Conor McGregor don't even have a similar, it sounds the same, yeah. but the twang is different. Yeah, yeah. 
I'm not really the same as him, if you know what I mean. But you've got the, that, that mentality, that kind of um, spirit. You it's, know, a, like, it's a spirit of yeah. like a fighter. It's a fighter spirit. Mm. And you don't have to be a fighter to have that mindset. You're a fighter. Mm. For you to have me here, to fly me here for a podcast, mm. you had to be a fighter in your head yeah. to do this. Yeah, yeah. 99% people cannot do this. I think people, but people don't understand it. Like, I don't know where it's come from myself, but, you know, I make sure things... I want things to happen, so I, I, I project it. And, you know, I've, I've seen Conor McGregor talk about it as well, like The Secret and things like that, and how, like, you project to the universe and the universe gives back to you. And, like, you're, the way you're working, the way you do things, like, it's actually coming to, um, to you. So, like, we know, we all know that you're going to be a superstar. We all know this. And, like, early on to, you, to, to see it and to actually, like, to witness it, it's, it's like a humbling feeling as well, especially when, how you've come from it. So like, how do you how do you actually like how do you stay humble basically? How do you make make that happen? Like because, you know, you could say you could have told me, oh, fuck off, I don't I don't need no, you because know? you where where we are now. You could, could you just one hundred percent? But like real, recognize real, bro. Mm. So I'm not I'm not <laughs> I'm happy to be here, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I'm happy to meet you also. But mainly it's just as I said to you, bro. God will bring the right people at the right time. Mm. It's not our. It's not. I did not script this, you did not script this, it just happened. And, yeah, no, I, it is, I'm still a nobody, bro. Make no mistake. I am the same guy that I was mm. five, five years ago, six years ago, with the, same potential, with the same potential that I had then. The only thing is now, we have social media. Mm. Social media kind of puts the limelight on me. I have a lot of this microphone time. Yeah. I have opportunities coming my way, yeah. that's all. But the same guy that was working five, six years ago, it's the same guy now. Yeah. In fact, I was probably, I could even say I'm slacking a little bit. Yeah. Obviously I have to travel here and there, everywhere, have to do this and that, but it's still the same hunger yeah. that I have. Yeah, yeah. So for me, this makes me humble, bro. This makes me, and plus where I come from, my friends, are back home, mm. maybe suffering, I'm not so sure. Mm. Maybe not living the lifestyle that you want, I'm not so sure. So, or even my friends that are in Ireland, mm. living beside me in the same area, but they're, they're now druggies or alcohol. Mm. And it's, it's heartbreaking, it's upsetting. Everyone has their own rule and I can't do anything but motivate and help. Yeah. And I'm trying to do that as best as I can. Yeah. I, want to, I wanted to take you there, basically, like, when we talk about the people around you, you know, easily we could have all fallen into, into a trap, into the trap. But um, how do you, how do you, is it from your background? Is it from what you've seen? And is that what keeps you, like, motivated? I don't want to put this perception on myself where... I never crack or I never f feel upset. I never feel sad. I never feel depressed. I don't want to sound or come mm. across like that. There's days where I feel like I can't find a way out. Yeah. What, what am I doing in my life? Even to this day, mm. I'm telling you right now, sitting here with the most potential, yeah. and we all know I'll be a superstar. I'm saying this right now. Yeah, yeah. But there will be a day, there's going to be a rainy day. Mm. And I'm going to think to myself, what am I doing? Just mm. get a job. Yeah, yeah. Just, what, <laughs> like, what am I doing this for? Like, I don't like to fight. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't like to hurt people. There's always going to be trickery. Mind is trickery. But no matter what comes my way, mm. I always remember why I started. Why did you start? This way. Let's go. Yeah. Some days, the let's go doesn't wake me up. Yeah. Maybe two days, I will still do it. Three days, now I, I find myself somehow doing it. Even if I'm not doing it, I'm not doing this for three weeks. Fuck this, I'm not doing this. Let, let's talk about it, like, um, the work. Like, I, I think people, I don't know what, some people understand, but I don't think people understand like, the work like, that we, like, we've all put in. Like, your, team, your team members, yourself, myself. Like, but some things that we've we've done. Even yesterday, we, we put ourselves. Yesterday, what was the work like? 
yeah. from all of us. Yeah, yeah. So it's that so work. How, 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 I mean, like, you know, things were happening, and um, we spoke about it earlier, and we, and now there's just their way. Everything first. happens for a reason. So that's 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 what I'm coming up from. How does that? It's just God's plan. I can't stress that enough. I'm a. This is where I need. I need God in my life, mm. and this is where I say to myself, God has done this for me. Mm. If you look at any superstar, Conor McGregor, every single one of them, either they say universe or God, whatever they want to say, but it's, it was meant to happen. Mm. All they done was their duty, which is yeah, to yeah. work. So you'll have a bad day, and you'll have this, and you'll have that. Mm. Work. Mm. Just, okay, work. If maybe I don't want to train today, yeah. but if all I can do is just do something to work it. One push up and go to sleep. Yeah. At least I worked. Yeah, yeah. It's one push up, right? Yeah. But I, I done that and I went to sleep. The next day will be better. It can't always be the same. You'll feel better some days. So it's just, there's no other way about it, but training, but working, uh, trying to outsmart the competition. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. What is, what is your advice? Because I, what I saw was so was like it was amazing. It, made, it motivated me, and I was trying to get you guys over here and try and do this this episode. And like, what, how? Like, it's not even how or why, but what would you tell um, like the people that's watching, Eritrean people, the Irish people, like people in general? How would you tell them like to get up, go do it? So the first thing that you have to do, visualize, manifest. Because you're next. Mm. So that's, I have that on my wallpaper on, uh, on, on my phone. First visualize what you want to do. You'll feel it. Manifest it somehow. And you're going to have to ask people. Or you're going to have to connect with people. Whether you're going to have to beg people. Whether you're going to have to do it yourself. Mm. Whether you're going to have to pay for it. Whether you're going to have to waste sweat, blood, tears, whatever it takes. Do it because you're next to do it yeah and it, it could be disheartening i understand when there's too many people telling you you can't do it as you said with the paint mm. you're not a doctor you're not an engineer you're not you're, you're not what money. you're not yeah, what yeah, the you know, you're not making get, money yeah. now you're not what yeah. the society do you know what the nine to five people do and yeah keep your opinions to yourselves mm. and stay strong mm. because i think eventually these people crumble we yeah. don't yeah, yeah. you know if you can afford to have that vision and you can follow it then i'm pretty sure you will do you'll do really good in life yeah. it's having goals and as, as, as you heard as well having a goal will will make you forget about your pain mm. and it will kind of make you hungry to reach and it's it's all about how you can maneuver it, how you can how you can change the feeling into your advantage. It's all about that at the end of the day. So it's just about getting to know what your faults are, what you need to improve or what you need to do and then boom, use that same emotion, use that same anger you have. Mm. It's cool. Try yeah. not to change it. Use that to fuel to get you to where you want to be. And yeah, heartbreaks is, it's, it's vital. Like it's, it is sad and it is, you know, it can be disheartening at times, mm. but what can you do? You have to, get up and go again. Yeah. yeah. I saw you, you, when I saw you, I was like, I have to get, um, no, I'm on, I have to get him on. I was like, made, made sure like I can do anything. Uh, yeah. Like and just, and you've, you've, you've done it. Yeah. Here you are, you've done it. And it's like, not that I'm anything big, but it's just that you've done what you've thought you were, you were going to yeah, do. Yeah. And you've made it happen. And same thing goes until you get Mayweather. In here, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's literally a vision away. Yeah, a vision away from getting anyone. Yeah, yes. Yesterday we was going through quotes. We was all we're, we're saying our quotes, and you know, um, you you mentioned um, one quote. Thoughts turn things. Yeah. So um, if and just can... to expand on that, yeah, thoughts turn things. It was by Heady one. He said it in one of the raps, yeah, yeah. but it makes a lot of sense to me. It resonates with my life, and it re resonates with life altogether. Thoughts turn things. That's my favorite quote. Mm. And I, I wanna, I wanna end with um, if you could tell the people 
um, like what motivates you, what 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 inspires you? If you could push um, um, yourself towards um, that go those goals that we was talking about earlier, like if it was a heartbreak or if it was um, if it was uh, something that went wrong, hardships. Yeah, I think this is my my message to anyone that's in a bad condition, in a bad situation. Go after what you want. No matter what people say, no matter what opposition say, no no matter what friends say, it's all, you, there's nothing that you can really do. Mm. You can't control people's mind, but you can control your mind. And vision don't lie. If you have a vision, chase it, get it. It all comes down to how bad do you want it. I don't care what you have to tell me. I don't care what you have to say. How bad do you want it? Mm. I don't need excuses. I don't need reasons. Ask yourself, how bad do I want it? Um, fail to prepare, mm. prepare to fail. So if you fail to prepare on your goals, you know, you might as well prepare to fail. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, what are you looking at books for, man? You can't read. I, I, I fucking read you like a fucking, my backhand, yeah? One jab, I'll see your movement straight into a question mark, kick, bang! <laughs> see ya, Take a book out there and give me every page. Look, I'm not even looking, boom, what comes first? Power. The power of fucking these hands, yeah? Just like that, whack! Speed, yeah? Bang! You know what I mean? I'll have your chin elevated, brother. It's called gravity. What the fuck do you know? Fuck you! Ra! In our culture, there's this myth that our ancestors used to rule the north of Africa up to Egypt for thousands of years. This is a known fact among our people. I would like to give you this picture. Yeah. Imagine there is a cake and there is a last piece that has been left to be eaten by a group of people. Yeah. And that last piece is our culture yeah. from the ancient Egyptian culture. The entire cake yeah. was the ancient Egyptian culture. And the last piece is what's left over. So if you want to find parallels between ancient Egypt, it will not be spoken in our culture. People yeah. cannot recall it easily. You would have to dig deeper by seeking parallels. Just before we take... Um